share a word with you for today. Amen. From the scriptures I have before you and the theme that the Lord put on my heart for you this morning. Amen. Ask, listen, and obey. Uh, the, the first thought that the Lord was giving me today was really on the voice of the Lord. And um, then he began to just show me a few things about his voice and, and asking and obeying and took me right back to um, Exodus, Deuteronomy. So let's just begin there. I'll share these verses and then just share the, the, the thoughts that were on my, my heart for you. From Exodus 15, 26, he says, And if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Deuteronomy 28 verse 2, and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. We know Deuteronomy 28 has first half is filled with, with the blessings of the Lord if you obey and curses if we were to disobey. And so it's a good read to remind us of what the Lord said he would do for us. So go back to Deuteronomy 28 in your own time and begin to see what the Lord said he would do if we would obey him and listen to his voice. Um, Jeremiah 6 verse 16. It says there. Um, in the complete Jewish Bible, here is what Adonai says, stand at the crossroads and look and ask about the ancient past, which is the good way. Take it and you will find rest for your souls. And then Isaiah 30, which I'm, I'm just realizing of all my scriptures, um, I didn't copy over, but I need to read that to you. Isaiah 30. Um, verse 21, I'm going to read, and then I'm going to read verse 30 and 31. I'm sorry it's not before you this morning. Isaiah 30, verse 21 says, And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way, walk ye in it, when ye turn to the right hand and when ye turn to the left. Verse 30 to 31, And the Lord shall cause his glorious voice to be heard, and shall show the lightning down of his arm with indignation of his anger and with the flame of a devouring fire, with the scattering and tempest and hailstones. For through the voice of the Lord shall the Assyrian be beaten down, which smote with a rod. Praise the Lord. So a few verses here, I'm going to just try and uh, pull them together for us today. The Lord was just challenging me on <laughs> what are we actually asking for? I um, preached a message about this somewhere on Saturday and it won't leave me, that we really need to uh, take advantage of this principle that the Lord has given us of asking. Uh, Matthew 7, 7, he, you know, he reiterates the principle that we should ask and it shall be given. Seek and we shall find. In John 15, it tells us that if, if his words abide in us and if we abide in him, we will be able to ask what we will and it shall be done. But it's important that the word is abiding in us. The word said also in the Psalms, if you delight yourself in the Lord, he'll give you the desires of your heart. There's two conditions. One is the word abiding in you and the other one is delighting in the Lord. I believe those two things anchor your asking and they should anchor the way in which you ask. What I'm asking for isn't frivolous. It's not just based on the passing needs or just how I'm feeling today. The word of God abiding in me is driving my requests. So is our asking driven by the abiding word is the question that I want to ask. In Exodus here, he's saying that if you will diligently hearken, so that's to do with listening, and then we'll do that which is right in the sight of the Lord. So if we both listen and then obey, follow, put into practice all of what God is saying to us, we will find that he will give us blessings. And even here, he's promising to the children of Israel that the afflictions that are coming upon the, the Egyptians, I'm not going to allow them to come upon you. Just because you, you've chosen to obey my word and have lived your life trying to fulfill them. Romans 8, 1 says, you know, there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And I believe 
those who are in Christ Jesus are those who have a Christ confession, those who have co confessed Christ as their Lord and Savior and have asked him to be the sovereign of their life. There's no condemnation for you. Um, will you make mistakes while you're there? Yes. Will you sometimes willfully sin? Yes, sometimes you will. But he says, if you are in Christ Jesus and are not walking after the flow after the spirit, he says, there's no condemnation for you. And I want to look at this, this diligent hearkening, hearkening, this, you know, this effort that we are making. That's why we get up to pray. We, we are diligently making an effort to do God's will, to do what's right in his sight, to give ear to his commandments and to keep his statutes. You know, we are moving in a Godward direction. Our efforts aren't being put towards sinning. Uh, John said in the epistles, you know, the person that's born of God doesn't make a practice of sin. And I don't believe that people who are saved plan to sin. I don't believe that people who are saved are sitting down scheming about how they can get away with sin. And, and they're, you know, planning to do one wrong thing to, to one next thing. The Bible says you're not born of God if you make a practice of sinning. But the same writer says, if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father. We have, a, we have the ability to go to God for, for help, for grace, for forgiveness. We have a, we have a middleman, but we don't, we don't live our life planning and strategizing how we're going to sin. Might we fall in sin? We may well fall in sin. We may well trip up. We may well give in to a temptation. But do we make a practice of it? No. We repent. We become accountable to our leaders and those around us. We confess our faults one to another. And so we are diligently trying to do God's will. And there's a blessing for your diligence. There's a blessing for your efforts. I've asked the question, are we asking about the ancient paths here? Or are we trying to create our own? No, I've jumped to the bottom one. I'm sorry. Are we asking which is the good way? Or are we telling the Lord the way we want to go? So Jeremiah is asking us, he's saying to us, stand at the crossroads and look. Ask about the ancient path, right? It, it seems like a lot of our asking in the modern church is, can we do it this way? Can we do it another way? Is it possible? You know, will you not overlook if we go that way? He says what you should do is ask for the way that was already established. There's nothing new we're coming with today. I, I shouldn't come to you with anything new. The Bible said there is nothing new under the sun. Everything that is, is everything that has been. It's, it's the same word of God that we're trying to bring to you. And the best that I can do is to allow the Lord to teach me the path that he'd already laid down, the path he gave to the prophets, the path that he laid down through the scriptures. Ask about the ancient paths. Which one is the good way? Which way should I go, Lord? Take it and you will find rest for your souls. But here's a generation that says we're not going to take that way. We don't, we don't, that's too old. We don't, we don't want no ancient past. And so are we asking, asking God to show us the good way? I think we should. When, when it comes to asking, let's stay in the word. Let our asking be word directed. Lord, lead us in the path, pathway of righteousness. It's always a prayer of mine. <clears throat> lead me in the path that's right. Lead me in the path that you want me to go. Lead me in the way of your word. The word of God said, the psalmist says that, you know, lead me in the paths of righteousness for the sake of your name. I don't want your name to be taken down in its estimation and in, 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 in um, how people consider God because I'm carrying that name, but now I'm walking down a, some new road. Are we asking about the ancient past? Or are we trying to create a new one? I've been seeing so many discussions back and forth online on, on certain things about marriage remarriage, divorce, and all these things. Very interesting comments. And I think I'm going to have to do a teaching on it because I, I'm hearing some very interesting uh, new ideas, new interpretation. Somebody's got deep in the Greek and been able to find a new way. But are we asking about the ancient way? Jesus said from the beginning, it wasn't so but people would rather reference historical documents about what people actually did. And, you know, they're, they're, they're referencing backslidden Israel as a standard for the new creature. I'm, I'll come back and teach on this. People don't want the ancient path. People want the pathway that's right for their flesh. That's the easiest way out. I didn't make the word of God. The minute I try to change that word, I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. If I want to try and bend the word to suit me or you, 
I'm in trouble. I don't have that right. Doesn't matter what miracles have happened yesterday. Doesn't matter what goodness I did the day before. If I try to change the word of God today, I'm a reprobate. You ought not to listen to me. I want to know about the ancient path. Show me, Lord, the paths that are ancient, the one that you established. The Bible says in Isaiah that there shall be a highway there and a way. Saints, it's the same highway we're walking on. It's, no, it's not a new road. It's the same road of Abraham, the same road for Moses, the same road as the apostles. We're walking on the same highway. It's a songwriter that had the vision. Don't you know I'm moving up the king's highway? This is not, this is not the highway of an organization. Your organization doesn't own the road to glory. It's an ancient path. And we many times come to crossroads and we have to stand and we have to look. We have to survey. We have to say, Lord, which this, this looks right, but which way is the good way? Show us the ancient path. Show us the way that leads to life eternal. And finally, let's just close out on listening and obeying. I know I've touched on it already, but every area of our lives will be blessed when we do our best to be mastered by the word of God. I put out a status today on Facebook that said, it's better to, to, to have the word of God master us than to try and be masters of God's word. Lord, master me, rule me, let your word lead and guide me. Because he says, when you find this road, you'll find rest. We talked last time about no burden, no rest. We could tie these two messages together. God's burden is, is on the ancient path. They deliver the same results. You will find rest to your souls, carrying God's burden, carrying his word, walking down the ancient paths, walking up the king's highway, allowing yourself to be mastered by God's word. Diseases and death pass over us. Untimely death should not be our portion when we live in obedience to the word of the Lord. Blessings will overtake us. When we are obedient, when we diligently hearken, uh, 20, 20, 20, 28 verse 2, all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if you hearken to the voice of the Lord. Sometimes we think our blessing is in getting in, in the right crowd, being friends with the right people, having the right connections. And all those things can help you. But I'm telling you what the word says is if you do God's word, he's got your pathway worked out. You don't have to try and curry favor. You don't have to try and you know, give gifts to people and try and get in people's good, good books. And No, no, no. Do what the Lord says to do. Blessings will overtake you. Stay focused. Don't be distracted. I was praying against distractions this morning. How many times the enemy has pulled us away from our purpose, being distracted by petty issues and what this one said and what this one did. Focus on doing God's will. Focus on being obedient. That's what I'm trying to do, saints. I'm trying to just live my life in obedience and I'm trying to keep my house in order. It's, it's, it's great that we can share the word, but my priority is to make sure that I am following God's word. My family, me and my house are set and configured to serve the Lord. That's my first ministry. That's your first ministry. Make sure that you're living in the right way, walking the right paths. Rest will be given to your souls in the ancient path. And I've put finally that we should expect resistance to it. I was praying for the unity of the body of Christ. And the Lord was saying, there's no problem with my body. There's a separation right now. There's, you know, I, I want us to come together, but the Lord showed me there's going to be a separation in this season. Unfortunately, there are some folks that don't want to walk on this path. They don't want to walk on it. And as much as you try to love them and be in unity with them, they don't want it. Expect resistance. People are going to say, we don't want this. We don't want to walk on this pathway. Focus on yourself. As for me and my house, be like Noah. Save your family. And the body will come together. You will see like-minded people will just gravitate towards each other. Some people are going to slowly drift out of your life. Some churches are slowly going to no longer be on your circle of fellowship. It's hurtful to my heart. And I'm praying, Lord, for unity. But the wheat and the chaff are going to be separated. God says, I'm going to put some to the right and I'm going to put some to the left. We are entering that season. So please, know God's will for your own life. Ask him to show you what's right for you. What's right for somebody else might not be what God is calling you to. And I say what's right. 
Somebody may feel very comfortable and confident in whatever it is they're doing. Don't take their life as an example. Follow Christ, follow his word, and ask him, is this right for me? Is this the path that you want me to take? Ask, listen to what he has to say, and then obey the word of the Lord. Be encouraged this morning in Jesus' name.